Okay, hey folks, how's it going? This is Peter Hahn. We're going to be going over some of the challenges that were submitted for this uh, new round. And I will scroll through majority of all the submissions, but of course, specifically talking about certain details, feedback, advice. I'll hand select a few as I go along, all right? I think this is just a, a nice little challenge here brought together. And also, uh, it's a good challenge of exercise just overall for you guys in the future to keep playing with. And there's definitely, of course, nothing wrong with using references in the future for your own work and should always be doing so because it's a standard practice in the industry. But the idea, of course, is not how do we use a reference, right? Is it literally one-to-one -one, or are we actually taking more of inspiration from it? Really letting ourselves be inspired to create, to integrate all this stuff and, and find that image that brings out this concept, this idea, this story, this expression. First things first, let's also talk about the referencing that was submitted from the Proco team. And we do have a couple things we can look at here, which is, of course, you know, just assortment of things. We have things like weaponry and, you know, cultural stuff, things like materials, shape, language, and form. Of course, the details of certain things and, and the functions of what these are. Okay, now let me know the referencing. Here's something from Ryan. It's a nice image. I think it has a nice softness to it. The character feels fun. So an image like this one here really gives me the curiosity to want to know more. Like, who is this character? Where do they come from? That kind of stuff. And of course, right now, as this challenge is, is based on whatever you can create in the moment. What I hope it also does is it kind of inspires you to say, oh, I really like this challenge. It was fun creating this thing, but now I want to do more with it, right? So I hope that something like this that is kind of making me want to know more about it is also doing that for you too. There's a couple of features in here that I feel like they're kind of like placed in a little bit last minute. But I think the assumption was that I have all this stuff and I got to be able to use as much of it as I can. So then choosing three images makes it not to say more challenging, but we got to be smart about what we're really choosing from. I think, again, the lemur tail is really not that necessary. I would have taken that out. I would have gotten rid of the flower. I would have maybe changed it out. And I know that we have, again, like three different elements that we want to bring in here, but I would have moved the flower into some other positioning. Maybe it's like in her hands or coming out because her arm is also tucked away. But if her arm was maybe brought out like this and she had her other arm coming down this way instead, and she had some sort of like, you know, flower stem coming out like that with the flower head over here. And instead, we, you choose a different reference of like a, a rock face or some sort of landscape that it's coming down so that her feet feel a bit more planted. I think that's the key thing for me is that what I would like to have maybe seen a bit stronger is just that sense of placement. Maybe there's like a, a slight cast shadow also gives it a bit more of its grounding. I think small stuff like that, I think would have been a nice little additional touch. It still brings focus to the main character right here. I just think it just generally works a lot better. Cool. Excellent. Nice job. Hey, Manta. Uh, let's see. Fire from the plane, flower, grasshopper. It's a fun little drawing. Well done. I think one thing you want to think about in the future is how much do you want to bring in one thing compared to another one? So for example, right now this feels like a split between the airplane and the grasshopper. The question is, what do you want it to be more, right? So once you choose a decision to that, well, I'll make it more of an animal, but I'll bring in the elements of what the function of the airplane does. It flies, maybe it carries people. Maybe it's not really a machine in the housing where people go inside the insect, but maybe they ride it on top of him. But it could have also been the other way. What if it's a machine, it's an airplane, but it has elements of a grasshopper, like the legs of the, of the landing gear, or the airplane wings flaps like an actual wing, right? Why not? It's fantasy. But it's not organic, it's a machine. But it's that selection and choice of one direction to another one that makes it feel more, not believable, but definitely in terms of understanding of context to what it does. But either way, it's still fun as an image, well played with, nice job. Stephanie, took me out of your comfort zone, it's good. Basically, jellyfish mermaid, loves high fashion, elements of nature. That's cool. I like the proportion of this. It doesn't feel like it's too warpy, you know? I like that there's a large mass on the top and it kind of stretches down to the bottom. So I think these kind of like flowery petal kind of things at the bottom probably could have been taken out. It would have made the read on the bottom end a little bit simpler, like the tail of the bird. And I think that would have been a nice little adjustment. But the posing, the movement, the proportioning and all the integration of the elements are pretty f uh, nice to see. The one only small detail about this is about how the headdress is sitting on top of the head of the character. Because it kind of has this weird overlapping issue where like the character's face and the hair is being is overlapping the flower petals behind it, but the flower petals are also coming above and, and past her front chest. So it, it kind of feels awkward there in that one little spot. I think if there were some petals overlapping her face a little bit, almost like a veil to a degree, I think that would have really helped a lot. I don't think you should have even showed the face fully in detail. Colors are great. I like that you colored the lines. It gives it a very kind of like, again, uh, cohesive colorway. Good stuff. Thank you. Kapazik, where we have multiple elements being brought in and kind of smashed together. This is pretty common in terms of how we approach this exercise and challenge when it comes to using referencing. And I think as a practice of actually pulling from references that we look at, th there's nothing wrong with that. Of course, you know, this is just as valid. 
as like trying to be, you know, like I said, a fresh take on something they're trying to draw. But into the future, the idea is that you want to use this challenge in, in, in this, kind of in this way. Think of it as a workflow in this process. First, isolate the images you want, which you have. Study those images separately. We've done this in the challenge demo, right? So if you didn't really get to actually draw these things separately, you don't really understand about how to build them potentially in, in your own way or in some other technique. From there, as you then study them, you start to get an understanding of what visually you like about them. And if you start to find that, you want to integrate those things. You also might find that actually as you've chosen that reference image that there's really no use there. You know, as you started to draw it or try to look for what's going on, you may find out that actually this is, there was nothing really there to, to begin with. So you're able to drop it. But if you try to forcibly put all this stuff together without really having thought about the process behind it, then of course the image can feel very jumbled. And there's really, there's so much distraction because it's pulling our eyes in multiple different ways. Now, again, I'm not really concerned about like, oh, what about your detail level anatomy right now relying upon the reference to do so that's fine but still having some of these being built out with form we got to do so more but if you know how to do that taking classes will help you with this or also just watching tutorials videos and going through proco stuff but still for me the big emphasis is on the idea of making sure a strong plan of attack goes into this the idea of what it is you're really trying to accomplish now we have a cool looking character is holding a weapon riding a motorcycle but I, I think if you really isolate it down to something a bit more clear simple of a read it actually can be a lot more powerful. In a lot of ways, what happens is when you have this much amount of stuff going on, it neutralizes the entire effect of it. Less is more here in this situation, okay? All right, cool. I have Harriet. How different you know, is this compared to what the jellyfish already kind of was, right? So it definitely has a, a beautiful aesthetic. I think the way it was painted, the way it was drawn, has a nice luminance to it, a nice brightness. It feels soft and inviting and whatnot. But I do wish there was a little bit more of a push on proportioning of anything else. You don't necessarily have to always mix everything together to create this crazy thing. It can be very, very subtle. It can be very nuanced. So what if the head of the jellyfish, I'm like squeezing and pulling in different directions, right? So I'm not saying add more things. I'm just saying take what is and play with it further, right? So what if the top cap of the jellyfish, you know, is like really extended out like that. And we then have... You know the lower half section which has all like those tentacle things or the plant work you're inspired by so all i'm really doing is manipulating the shape in a form by stretching things in one direction compressing it in another think of it like a sculptural effect where you know i'm taking what i know what i can see from the reference image by studying it i can get a sense of its form and three-dimensionality to it but then from there in my mind i can also play with the idea of manipulating it right so as i do so what was is now something a slightly more unique yet it resembles and it comes from the same cut of the cloth. So it's not like we have lost a translation of what we're actually even looking at. It's just that it's a slightly unique visual take on it now, right? And that's just one little iteration. After having done, you know, maybe like five, six, seven, 20 different iterations of types and me playing with that, I might settle upon one that I find more visually compelling compared to then just kind of going off of the reference, right? Cool, nice job, Harriet. That's nice, lone, beautiful aesthetic. Line quality is through the roof. Hatching details in the clouds. I love the I love the way you're cutting through the planes. I think maybe the only thing for me is just the distribution of line weight could have been played with. Maybe the background clouds could have been just a touch lighter in weight. Could we counteract that though? Maybe the stuff in the foreground could be even denser, right? And you have it pretty heavy in terms of line weight thickness, but you can also potentially push that a little bit more. Granted also potentially things like painting it can really help focus things. But even at the drawing stage and level alone, it should convey that sense of softness and balance between certain subjects and also elements within a, in a shot. Look, the rock structure below it, again, kind of blends into the cloud form to me. I wish there was a way to maybe even separate that. The shape language is somewhat doing it, but not too much because they're both kind of chiseled. So heavier, denser shadows on the bottom half. And then pushing that line weight really strong around the figure. Love the pose, a lot of the features, stylistically, also really great proportions. You look done. Let's go down to Fernando. Use all the references at once. So this is where it gets a little bit too complex, right? There's a lot of stuff going on. I'm sure this is fun to do. I don't deny that. And I don't think that stuff like this is a bad thing either, you know? It's great for just keeping the fun factor there to sketch loosely, just kind of see what happens on the page for the creativity to get churned, you know? And as you get more and more warmed up and into it, then you can start to officially start to, you know, do the things you needed to do. But stuff like this is definitely an exercise that gets you know, your kind of your blood pumping, you know? So I understand the value of something like this one here. Even within something like this as you're playing around, its organization of it is easier to balance. And that's what you kind of want out of image stuff like this, right? Balance, not just chaos of stuff. 
funny stuff. Thank you. Roma is uh, taking a look over here with some of the stuff. Done with liners and watercolor. Nice. Great. It's a nice drawing. Beautiful intricacy. Uh, the layering effect is really nice. Some of the parts where they start to integrate together, the connection factor of it is really cool to see. Especially my favorite part is the bottom section of the engine going into the instrument. It has a lot of really cool visual sense sensory to it. I can almost visualize the moving parts and the sound of it almost as well too. I get a lot of sensory information from this because my mind can input that from your image. The color obviously adds to that. The watercolor here was done well. Light washes. You didn't let it get out of control as to a render. The line work is being supported by the watercolor itself. So again, it brings a lot of unity to it. And I think it's a great image. It's actually something I find very attractive, enjoyable. It's interesting. Elements of story, the aesthetics of details and tech are really fun. And the integration of all the elements is cool. I would say the only thing for me, if it was to bring up anything, would be that the fact that there are sections of this that felt very compartmentalized. Like the instrument panel is an instrument thing. You know, the jellyfish is the jellyfish thing. You know, so I think if there was a bit of crossover, a little bit of weaving, like if some of the piping from the, from the instrument also came over to the other side a little bit here, color-wise or shape-wise, I think that would have been nice to have seen as a bringing an overall sense of cohesiveness, you know? The connection factors are there in a technical sense of one part to another part. But in terms of unity of shape language or aesthetic or theme, in the use of the reference, I would have tried to find a way to cross-pollinate them. Beautiful work. Here's an image from John Sant. Hail the Lawn Protector. Cool character. I see the grasshopper influence. I like that he's also more human in a lot of ways. He's got insect elements about him, mostly exoskeleton, a little bit of proportion, and also change of anatomy to the hands. This kind of like decision making of choice of proportion adjustments and replacements of things is a lot of fun to do. So I think what you're doing here is actually quite successful. I like what you're, you're pulling from image wise. It doesn't feel like you're exactly pulling from things you were seeing from the images, but being more inspired by them and choosing and selecting what you liked about them and bringing it together to create some sort of cohesive visual character, essentially. The holding part of it, the position and pose of it is a little bit awkward at times though, but I think a lot of it has to do with the foreshortening that could have happened with the weapon coming towards the camera. And that could have been just slightly adjusted by using things like forms instead of just a black silhouette, uh, using forms of cylinders or boxes or whatever the case is to kind of give a better sense of its three-dimensional element to it, you know? His proportioning, his stance, his balance, I like quite a bit. Again, hand placement is great, but just watch out for the weapon, okay? Nice one. Come on. Beautiful render. Love the focal point. The contrast in the area, the read of the texture, information, but also how the information of texture starts to get more dissipated and minimized towards the bottom end is a really good touch. Visually, it does have a lot of attractiveness to it. It captures me in terms of some of the aesthetics of line control, overall sense of skill set within this tool set of pencil. It looks really, really good. High quality stuff. The one thing that I would like to have maybe shifted doesn't come into the details. I love the way it looks on the surfacing. It has an almost like sculptural, like metallic look to it, which is really great. But I think there are some things where the repetitiveness of shape and also some of the features kind of makes it fall flat a little bit because we have such uniqueness and movement in like the head and also around the neck area. And it's not to say you have to have the same kind of elaborateness all over the body, but I think even like how the posing could have elevated this too. You know, like this particular shot where this animal is gripping this branch structure and how i wish like things like this in the front end where yes maybe one of the arms that comes down is gripping it the way you've already kind of set it with like these long claw like structures but then maybe the other one as it comes downwards this direction is maybe doing something else maybe the claws are kind of angled up like that maybe one's like kind of rising or trying to find its grip you know trying to reposition itself so just by kind of altering its positioning of its, of its limbs and its grip forms. I think it would have been really nice touches here. And even the bottom leg as it comes up is also interesting, but instead of actually gripping it, what if it's about to grip it? And the other leg, of course, is perched on top. So then we wouldn't have this like very consistent pattern that's going on right now. And because it's so even, it just doesn't look as compelling in those areas or natural or organic. So I think if he brought in a little bit of this sense of posturing, interaction from the feet placements, I think would have been very nice to see. That's really the only thing. But everything else, though, I, I do find to be quite stunning. Thank you, Damon. Ooh, this is cool from Pedro. We, just, we still have something here from the lemur. We do have the birds. I love the posing. The colors are great. I, I kind of wish there was a bit more push on proportioning from you. The integration of these two elements brought together feel almost pretty good. The tail is one of my favorite parts. The arm to the wing is really nice, too. The face features kind of feel like they're just tacked on. 
the integration of the secondary part, which is a bird being brought into this is great, but I wish the actual core, the form of the lemur was pushed and stretched much more. There is a lot of good expression here. I really like the intensity of the faces. There are some really great things about this character that conveys this unity of the armor set to the CD horse, but just the stylization, how he took those shapes and really simplified them, I find it to be very kind of um, fun. You know, very fun, actually. The background thing, you know, that creature monster is also pretty terrifying. <laughs> well, especially with the eyes, it looks like a bear or some type. So when I saw your image, it kind of reminded me of those old classic covers of video games because of their posing, was making it really fun and really dynamic and nice, simple shape form language. This one here, the Rocket Knight. I just thought it was a really nice parallel. A nice image. Definitely caught my eye because of that. Ooh, Sleemer. That's what they're calling it here. The page layout is great. Yeah, definitely calls our attention to a lot of things. Shows us the environment, the food source, specific details, posing, habitat, and then also like how it actually functions of eating the things. This presentation conveys so much good information and it makes the animal so much more contextually believable. There's so much more richness there, you know, to it. Very textural. It's very living. It has a sense of like, you can almost like smell it <laughs> in a way. It looks like dank and fungusy and kind of like swampy looking materials. And you can imagine it probably doesn't smell that good, but you can almost get that extra sensory element to it. Callouts, really cool stuff here. Showing us how you integrated those elements. This is a great wrap up. Showing us arrows and directions as to where things are going. This is a great piece. There's so much thought process put into this. A little gift here in terms of turning into nocturnal. It goes into bioluminescence. Wow, that's great. This is very, very stunning. I'm very uh, happy with the result of this piece because it shows us a lot of process. Thumbs up for me on this one. I like it. Two bug gladiators. Okay, cool. I like the characterization. The posing is great. His extension of the arm coming over. That's, that's very nice. The forward lean, the triangle to his pose is also really good too. The defensive posture of the other guy. Uh, I kind of wish he was a bit more kind of like leaning back a bit further. Or I guess maybe even leaning forward to kind of uh, to take the actual impact. The camera I would have maybe altered slightly to give it one more dominance to the other one. The two equalize right now. So in a drawing like this one here, we tend to go for these kind of shots because we want to show both characters. But in most situations, I think in terms of creating even more of a dynamic scene, prioritize one or the other as being dominant to weak. And so you can push the camera or the posing or the scaling and sizing in that way. You can give our connection to, let's say, the guy about to be hit. So let's bring the camera more to him, maybe from a slight, maybe up angle view possibly, I don't know. But we can actually see his power stance further, where the other guy's trying to attack. He looks a bit weaker, maybe. But if we move the camera to the other side, to the guy who's striking, uh, and we the other guy kind of smaller in scale, then the power dominance play is kind of shifted a little bit. It's harder because those camera shots are hard to find. Those are the kind of things that really adds to, again, the effect of this. That's a nice looking character. I like the face a lot in terms of the simplicity of shape. Uh, the silhouette reads pretty well. There's a couple of layers that I feel like maybe the complexity just gets in the way just slightly. The tangent does kind of irk me a little bit, especially with the way the fungus is lined up right along with the dress. If the positioning of the, of the table or the mushroom was kind of shifted a bit more to the right, overlapping her dress a bit more, I think that would have been a really nice adjustment here. But I, I like the posing of it. The costuming element of design here feels fun, unique. It's a lot of information at times and there are some areas i do wish that were a bit more simplified I, I think because of the busyness of all the layers and the frill in the front of the dress i think the one on the back end probably could have been a bit more not only just simplified but just less drawing if anything else so if this section here you know with the cape coming down and the edge cape, cape detail is where you can really kind of place a sense of movement of the fabric and the material but at the base of it where it's connected up to the top this overlapping section is where you clearly define that texture or the patterning and we can then you know bring it in in those areas but as it comes downward it starts to become more indicated meaning you just suggest the information a little bit and then of course you use the color for gradient so instead of just being one block of color i would have graded this to like being this kind of green saturation to maybe like more of a yellow or something much lighter and more maybe more neutral as well you know so that concentration of focal point of color is really isolated up there that's really the, the main thing about this, that this becomes a bit flattening because there's just so much competition and conflict of visual noise, essentially. Like I said, overall, I do find this to be very entertaining. It's a great looking character. Awesome stuff. Thank you. We haven't seen a lot of environments yet, so mostly character work. So. so I like the composition. The overlapping elements of forms are nice. Scaling is interesting because we have these massive flowers and these things in the background, but that's the wonder now. So is it massive flowers or is the object really small? Right? When we have objects that are so familiar, things like flowers like this, we have a sense of scale of our own. So the flowers to us are small. So that means the environment itself must be tiny. 
But if you had altered proportion or details of the designs of the flowers themselves as being like these stalking gigantic forms that can take elements of the flower but additional things, right? Texture, shape language, making it different than what typically might be a flower. You know, we have the core and we have the core section and we have the petals. You know, and that's a flower. But then what could we have done with the central part? Maybe altered it based on its height and stretching it. The petals could have been in rows, like a, like a kind of like a redwood tree, you know? So making it more tree-like could have been also of a stronger conveyance of size and status and strength to, uh, to things that we know of in forests. I think those are the only suggestions I have. But the drawing looks nice and clean. Well composed again, as I said. The shot that we had that I talked about, uh, the, the abstracted one, that reference photograph, uh, it was still interesting. And a lot of people that actually took it did some really cool stuff, but people were stuck to that camera. Now, I'm not saying that these are bad in any way. These are still great images. All I'm talking about is as you move into the future and when you're presented with images, you find certain things. We can tend to go for what is. And so you take that information and you take it one for one into your sketches or your designs, storytelling too. But then what could I do with that that could be retooled for something else? What if I took that shot that was the piano that was dead and we have a person sitting, like a mannequin sitting there? The same shot, yes, but what if I put it into like a cockpit of like a vehicle or ship, right? Potential change. It's not an instrument anymore. It's not the same kind of, I might even change the camera. More of a dining angle view. It's more difficult to obviously do this. But the idea is that that in image can spark for me some sort of idea and concept that I would need to explore then further, right? Very cool. Here is Lewis, the chariot is what he's calling it. So the influence, of course, of that uh, armor set, we see the weapon in there. And of course, the motorcycle being converted into something more chariot-like. We have a seahorse uh, that was pulling the entire thing. It looks like it died and keeled over. It's a funny image. Now, I, I find it to be quite you know, visually humorous. And it's got that kind of um, single image panel comic, like newspaper comics and stuff like that, you know? The, the figure itself was actually pretty fun. I like that he's got a beetle on his chest right there. The angle of view is interesting. I think the, the vehicle sitting on top of the ground plane, it doesn't necessarily fit so well. It feels a bit teeter-tottered. I would invest a bit more time on drawing the actual landscape surrounding the character a little bit. Uh, not to say they have to have a whole background, but just the ground plane itself, I think would have been more than enough. It's a nice little drawing though. I love that little seahorse down there though. That's a really nice touch. Yeah, this would take me an entire day to go through everybody's work. And I wish, really wish I could do that. So I hope the feedback I'm giving to everybody here gives everybody a good idea as to what you would do with your own work. The idea is that feedback is not just for that one person. The feedback is for the entire experience and challenge. And so you can use that information towards your own work and seeing what you would do slightly differently. And if you want to go back and do this again, I would very much recommend you do so. Okay. So working with each other, giving each other feedback, all that kind of stuff, highly crucial. But when you guys make comments and stuff like this, you know, don't only just make the comments of like, hey, great job and, you know, nice drawing or good energy, that kind of stuff. But you know, give them a couple of thoughts of like, you know, what it is you think could be added to it. You know, I know that we're kind of tentative to like, oh, I don't want to over critique somebody. You're not trying to hurt their feelings, nor should you receive it that way either. We're here to help each other build. And so um, you yourself have the, uh, have the right to opinion on something. Not to say you're only just trying to bring it down. That shouldn't be the case. But to go there by saying, yeah, I think what, what's happening here is a great concept, a great potential. I hope this really continues moving forward. But I do feel like there's a couple things here and there that you can maybe kind of refine and adjust. And I hope to see it you know, being taken in that direction because it's a great piece so far. You know, that kind of stuff. I think it's really helped the idea of supporting but also kind of focusing on some parts that need to be attended to. And by saying, I hope, you know, it comes to a conclusion and, and look at it again, you know. Tachi has a pretty crazy mech robot kind of thing. Yeah, we got so invested into the details. And I think going into the future, Tachi, I think the one thing I would want you to do next time is um, finding out how to convert all these into the primitive forms again. So if there are body parts, it's like a big kind of box-like form. The head structure being another box of sphere. Uh, the top end section, what kind of form is that, you know? So it kind of felt a little bit like you're trying to solve that problem on the page in this one drawing. And you did bring in some of the parts in symmetrical sense pretty well, but that top section felt a little bit confusing for you. It didn't seem like you understood how to take these top panels and bring it into the front of the camera. So stuff like that, I would have really solved out separately and trying to show me then the ability that you're sketching to get that information out because for you, I'm sure the struggle was there. Wow, it's photo bashing, right? This kind of photo bash stuff is always fun. Uh, you get usually a nice kind of polish at the end. Usually it, it does take a bit of working to kind of unify the photos and making sure the texture of it reads really well and also the scale, the scale, the texture information. Oh, Book Genie. A nice shot, the side view. I like the integration of the wires into the motorcycle. Uh, the lemur obviously being the rider, the grasshopper being the motorcycle itself. There's some good shape language. I like your movement of lines. There's a lot of good action going on in terms of the effects, the, the posing. From a side view, of course, it's more flattened out, but it's a really good study as to get a sense of what's actually being positioned properly. It looks like what you did though, is that you took it to a three-quarter view and uh, you started to see what it would look like in more of a dynamic action of camera. 
Uh, the motorcycle is the motorcycle. I don't really see a lot of the grasshopper in that part when it comes to a different angle of view. It conveys much stronger in the side view because the information allows it. But the three-quarter view doesn't really kind of convey that strongly enough. So the question is, what could you have done in the front view that also really conveys that grasshopper? Maybe the headlamps being more head-like of an insect? Something, potentially, right? Maybe the legs of the insect come up further behind it. That could have been another solution as well, too. I think there's something that's really fun, though, for sure. Overall, I like the energy. The energy of this is really nice. Good stuff. Thank you. Let's keep going. Nice illustration over here on this one. Yeah, that's great. Wow. It has a lot of atmosphere, a great sense of mood. I find this to be very appealing, especially with the early silhouette studies, side views, just a bunch of proportional changes of things, taking the animal, the lemur, brought together, the inner structure of skeleton, height and scale, proportion, and just the overall mood of the story. Wow. Nice one. I like how just eerie it is. It's really eerie. Kind of reminds me of some of those like classic, you know, children's nightmare kind of illustrations, you know. I like them a lot. That was great. Thomas Armored Nectar Sucker. Got a creature. This page right here. Yeah, I like these. Uh, looking for information of details extracted from the animals, but then also moving them in different directions. Like a head pose, looking straight on, up, down. But again, just trying to alter angles and positionings. Which then influences, of course, the final shot of this creature. And, you know, the creature itself is a pretty cool blend. Uh, but I do like that you also Im implemented the thumbnail practicing from beforehand into this. And that shows that there was a bit more mindfulness of searching. You know, not just like trying to solve it through the single image here. Line weight felt a little bit too uh, flat in some areas, though. I'd play a lot with the idea of being able to taper. So taking your lines, going thick to thin. But some of them also fall a bit flat where you can kind of see it here, right at the head and the bottom. It falls flat right there because it stops abruptly. It goes thick, stops, and it goes to a thin line instead of smoothly gradating to a thick and thin. And so the line weight right now is not fully integrated seamlessly into the rest of the drawing. It's either really thin of a line that you use as an initial drawing or super heavy as like a silhouette or like an inner hatching. And they don't really connect well together. What could we do? Maybe add a third variant of line that is an in between weight or using more of a gradient, thick to thin. Despite me talking about process, we do have pieces like this that are also important. Polishing it, rendering it, that's nice illustration. You know, this kind of thing still kind of falls in the categories that I've talked about in the past, which is, you know, we have a lemur, you know, we have the armor set, we have the spear, and nothing's really been changed. They've been integrated better together in this one because it feels like it's very much more natural to the animal wearing this thing. The pose is great. The rendering of the color, really fun too. It brings a nice silhouette to the individual character itself. But, you know, how much of this has really been altered or manipulated or repurposed or reinterpreted in a slightly different way uh, that can stand out from everything else we've been seeing so far, right? And in that sense, not that much. But I think the technical quality is very nice. Great job, Tony. Well, it seems like you feel like not very confident about your work. I hope you can feel that sense of confidence in your stuff as you continue to really further progress and start to practice as you go along. And again, the sketching and drawing here, there's some really interesting stuff. I like the way the face has been drawn out. Profile, and some of the details are actually captured pretty well. The underlay sketch is a good little thing that you have. And the posing is nice and expressive. I do wish the camera was played with a little bit as you also thumbnail further. You kind of lose a bit of discipline in some of the areas where I think the focus of the drawing is well placed in with line, but then everything else has kind of felt a bit haphazard a bit kind of carelessly. So I think the mindfulness of line detail should be relatively well controlled. It doesn't have to be equal, but the strength and confidence of lines should be somewhat there. But again, there are some really fun stuff with this kind of almost mechanical, like insect-like character thing brought together. For some reason, I don't know why, but it reminded me of like something from Peter Pan, how he's holding the rapier and he's got that crazy like headdress stuff and it looks like he would fly around. What if it's like an insect version of Peter Pan, right? <laughs> I don't know, with, especially with the horn and whatnot. Crow like a rooster from that hook movie, right? The pencil work is not too bad. It's very line stroke heavy. Where I would have done a lot of other things where I'm like kind of smudging things in the background or larger coverage of the varies by using different sort of pencils. I kind of see that maybe this is all like a sharp line with mechanical pencil. So if you had some wooden pencils as well too to kind of do some shading and grouping of, of different shadow groupings of areas in the background too would have been nice to have. Really just kind of framing the silhouette. So I'll, if I had taken like, let's say like a 2B pencil or something like this and use the side of that pencil to lightly start to kind of build up value and in the background, kind of like, you know, knocking all this stuff down. It's with the gradient of that pencil, which, you know, it's not easy to do because a lot, it can also be a lot of work. But that in itself with the investment into the background, I think it's kind of needed because, again, same thing. I want to frame figure with a darker value in the back. But when it's paper to paper on the background, all you have is a line to help separate one object from another one, background the character or background the subject. It all kind of flattens out. So by using things like washes or things like gradients and things like graphite to kind of push value a little bit, 
simple pass like this. I'm not saying they have to cover up these details either. These kind of rock details and the plant work can also still be shown. It's just that it doesn't overtake it because now it, all, it felt before very scattered. You know, like a rock detail here, plant over there, rock in the background over there. So it's all calling our attention in different ways because the structure of it is all similar. So by doing a simple pass like that, it could potentially help. So the image from Darien, obviously pulling from the shape language, the forms, I can see the color invested a lot of painting into this one. The amount of work that probably went into this was probably several days. I like the mood. The vibe of this is actually really quite immersive. There's a lot of things to look at, but it's also not necessarily distracting. There is a relatively strong focus because of the gradient and also the use of saturation and color, lighting into that central kind of jelly kind of inspired creature that's being obviously being pulled out of this other creature. There are some things and elements in the background which we can see some details like the insect guy in the back and of course the guy that's actually pulling out the thing. But still, I like the fact that they're kind of lower in value and having it kind of graded away and kind of disperse off is actually a really nice effect here because they could have also been drawn in with silhouette. So if the background was lighter, I don't think this image would have been really as strong. So definitely for sure the idea that you were able to kind of make sure it maintained the area of focus of where the eye should go was what I really enjoy about this. Now I can see the obvious inspirations from the different things that we're pulling from, but it doesn't necessarily feel like you took it, took it directly from the images, which is also what I like about what's going on too. Compositionally, it's not too bad. I think it brings up a nice kind of area of focus. Nothing's like dead center. Nothing's being cut off awkwardly, except that little tangent right there is the only thing about it. There are some areas of lost edges, which is pretty cool. And I'm not really looking for any sort of like clarity within the fabric here right now. Anatomy wise, it's not too bad also too. There's a couple of weird things in terms of the rendering part where there's a lot of softness and blurriness internally. It does give it that bit of translucency, which is kind of cool, that skin-like feature. But I do wish some of the overlapping was better blended in a way. Excellent, cool job, Darren. Uh, well done. Nice little mech design over here. Nicely drawn though. I love the proportions. I think that's really effective. I was a bit worried about the top half section of it, but that actually turned out really nice. I love the additional little rectoral like kind of arms in the front chest, uh, the side, you know, arms coming off like the land mate from Appleseed. Definitely love the head design. Very great. I would alter the weapon's proportion to match up to the shape language on the actual mech itself. Because again, you took the reference, great, but then you just kind of like pulled from there directly. Whereas you manipulated the grasshopper greatly to, you know, mechanicize it, but why not do that with the weapons too, right? Very cool. Evan here. Nice anatomy work as well too. The ballpoint pen study that shows us the beautiful hatching where they kind of show softness of silhouette in the background. Great focal point to foreground. Posing is being used from the lemur. Uh, I do like that at least there is some interaction between something in the foreground to the background. I wish the space was better overlapped though because I feel like it's on a flattened space right there. It doesn't really convey a sense of like foreground to background. It almost feels like two-dimensional slide. So I think if they were shifted a bit more, if there was a bit more of a landscape overlapping the character in the background, I think that would be kind of nice to see. That would be the only thing for me though. It's just the context of foreground to background, you know. If there was something maybe even in the middle, create a sense of overlapping, is all I would have really incorporated. Everything else though is solid. It's kind of some nice cool detail to it. Yeah, it's interesting. Love the contrast of the black and white, very graphic novel aesthetic. Love the surface detail texturing. Hatching line work, pretty fun. The character in there also gives a sense of scale, context, a little bit of environment. The background pieces of the big fins, I think that could have been played with a little bit because the shape language conflicts again at this point. Anything of conflict shows that it was just kind of slapped on. So if there was a bit more unity within shape, within texture, within function, I think are, are the key elements here. So when I look at the stuff around the, the creature, I see some of the armor set you know, around the base of the shoulder and the kind of shoulder pieces right there. Yes, I like that contrast of the black to the white. But then I think some of the shapes within the edges of the fins could have been altered slightly with these like bone-like structures. It could still be straight and tapered, but that little addition of texture or surfacing detailing, I think would have helped unify it a little bit together. But then maybe that's a lot of noise, you know? I also wonder if like it would have benefited without it at all. Because I think it kind of hinders the silhouette read from the head being so unique of a shape down to the shoulder. It has a much stronger feel to it. I think I like the feel of maybe the fins being at a down angle, like a triangle. So taking these pieces on the left and right on the top and angling it downward so it kind of points up to the head, I think that would have been a cool touch. But it's still a great drawing. Cool, thank you. Zayla, first ever. Harley Hopper, 650. Dystopian future. Nice little storytelling. Full stories besides the sketch. Wow, a whole storyline too. Introducing to Harley Hopper, 650. I like it. Capable of flight. Plants and flowers are Perfect fuel source. So he eats things too. So it's an actual animal potentially mixed into a machine. Uh, again, fantasy, sci-fi. Because again, it's still very machine-like. I can see like metal parts and like these bars and whatnot. It's so symmetrical. Uh, as being an organic thing, you know, expected to be a bit more, you know, you start to see things like exoskeleton parts and joints and movements. And the draw-through method in terms of using the underlay with a top layer line is a really cool touch. 
it brings a lot of energy to your drawing. There is also clarity because of the top layer being really well refined and pushed in, in contrast. Well put together, thank you. A nice shot on this one from Jared. Wow, that's cool looking. It's crazy like creature thing being, you know, chasing after an airplane. Beautiful shot. I, I do wish they were overlapping slightly, you know. I think if the insect was actually even larger in scale, I think we have brought this airplane down in scale, overlapping this insect bug-like creature. Use a harsh, harder line, push in on the drawing to help separate the two silhouettes. Even having less detail on the uh, animal in the background too, making it feel so massive and large, then the frame of it, I want to focus on it like that. It just feels like there's a little bit more uh, interaction going on between the two. They just were at such a distance from each other. Just a slight repositioning of composition. But the drawing does look beautiful though. Nice piece. Very, very elaborate, but also intensive the amount of work. Uh, Monica, this is illustration. It's a beautiful drawing. Nice line work, great posing. Obviously, the inspiration is coming from taking the elements there again and kind of literally putting them in. But of course, the posturing, the posing, the ability to kind of move things in form and space shows, you know, very advanced techniques and drawing skill. So it does look very fantastic. You know, the accuracy of anatomy here, the interesting camera shot, the posing, the composition, the contrasting shapes. Really, really stunning stuff here. Good work, Monica. Beautiful illustration over here, what watercolor looks like. Give it a bit of attention. Wow. Kind of reminds me of Hajime Soriyama, this Japanese illustrator who used to do these crazy abstracted, like, um, humanoid, animal kind of creature mechanical things. Uh, it reminds me of that a little bit. All right, let's go to Jan, a speedy boy. We see the collected images. So stuff like this, what stands out to me the most at the, at the initial impression is the presentation. The presentation of what we're looking at. So how it's put together. So this could now creates a mood board, gives us an idea of like what image we're looking at, grasshopper, the fig, the airplane, and also the motorcycle. And then we have, you know, a, a little bit of, not really studies per se, but more of a um, several image indication to kind of show us what it is you're trying to convey. We have the initial line work, then we have the color work. No, and I don't think there's any adjustment there in terms of like proportioning or details. It looks like the bottom sketch was taken to the color after it. But I do like the one on the left hand side that incorporates the human figure. And that gives us now a sense of scale, context. That's truly also important too for design, communication. So a very fun image. I like the way it was put together. I love the texture. The sense of surfacing texture with your painting, but also in the line work. In the drawing, you also still convey an equalness amount of information. It doesn't feel overworked though. It doesn't feel over rendered either. And that's the thing about this is that it doesn't feel like you took every section of it and just took it to the max. It gave enough information to the viewer to kind of fill in the rest of it as I go. And it was very clear. Nice job, Jan. I think all of you guys, again, like I said, did a great job. I'm really happy with the results. I think there was so much diversity and also variation and application, which is always nice to have within this. I hope that was enough information to kind of like at least view a couple pieces up here. Uh, talk about a few things, see how well you guys were able to integrate things together and learn off of each other as much as possible. Please, you know, take the video demo that i shown as just information and opinion on things you can use it for yourself. And if you do more into the future, you know, keep working with the challenges on Proco. And if you guys are ever interested in taking more classes, get feedback like this that I offer in like fundamental classes and design classes, follow me on Instagram on Peter Han Style. I'll announce where registration happens. You can go to a Shopify store where I do registration of classes itself online. I have also sit-in option of seats. So if anybody doesn't want to pay full for an actual class, but just wants to sit in and get a bit of information, you can do so. Look into it because next November is when we'll start. October will be registration, which will be happening very soon. Definitely consider everything we talked about on how you would approach this. Not to say that what I'm saying is right or wrong or trueness to things, but more of a consideration. Yeah, everyone did a fantastic job. Thank you guys again. I do appreciate that. I'll see you all later on. Thanks.